What's up guys, we are to with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to talk about Nobu and how exactly Nobu can counter the Dark Hold. Yes, we have come to that point in time where Nobu is actually meta and he can actually counter Horseman characters, who have, who have thought about that? It's just insane that the, that the most mimed character ever now is able to defeat one of the most powerful teams in the game. So we're going to talk about all of that and we're also going to take a look at the Underworld team overall and uh, get our minds across that team, if it's going to be a good team to invest in or not, what can you do with that team in Alliance Wars and also outside of Alliance Wars because if the team only has value in Alliance Wars that's not going to be very significant. So as always if you like the information on this video make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and make sure you smash that like button. Okay let's get started, let's talk about Nobu, everyone's favorite character but let's also talk about the Dark Cold. So before we start talking about the character specifically we need to talk about the team so this team works in a very weird way and this is mostly for alliance wars outside of alliance wars it doesn't matter but in alliance wars the position of the characters is going to matter by quite a lot because on spawn taskmaster is going to get a turn meter and he's going to give turn meter to the entire team based on how many allies he has that are underworld or villain mercenary so depending on where the character are you might get a 500% turn meter or you might get 700% turn meter and that's like uh, it's interesting it's definitely interesting because it allows us to figure out another hidden secret about Marvel Strike Force which is the order of operations now this was discovered by some guy Stefan something Stefan 436 something I don't remember his name exactly but you can find him often uh, together with the uh, mobile gamer or Remenex or uh, Dorky Dad or anyone on Twitch pretty much is usually around the corner and he was one that figured this out so the order of operations the characters that will always start first is going to be this guy first so it's one and then two three four five so if you want characters with the exact same speed to go first then you need to have them here so one two three four five and uh, this is very interesting because now when we are pairing up characters for raids and uh, other game modes if they have the exact same speed like uh, Cloak, Shang-Chi and Captain Sam depending on which position they are they will always go first so this is something very very interesting and it, it was definitely something important to learn so we can figure out even better what's going to be the best position for the characters now in terms of uh, how this team counters the Dark Cold this team works on the basis of zerging the enemy. If you don't know what the term zerging means, it's just to overboard the, your side of the field with the characters and then they attack one, ter one target specifically. So this is going to be your five characters plus another five minions and then everyone is going to attack Morgan of Fey. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the rotation that you can do. You can do it in a few ways, but we're going to take a, a look at my favorite. And then uh, we are going to use uh, Nobu to give uh, counters for everyone. And uh, this is going to be very interesting. He's going to, do, he's going to give the flex and counters for everyone. And uh, yes, it's going to be convenient for you to have the T-Force on the basics of everyone in case you want to be like uh, top meta or MLG and so on. Uh, if you want to be like super tryhard, just do the basics on every character for maximum advantage. But Nobu is going to apply counters for everyone. If you do the T4, it's going to guarantee two counters and that's going to be important because you can one shot not only a character like Morgan Le Fay, but you can also one shot the next character to attack whether it is uh, Scarlet Witch, Agatha or uh, Strange Supreme. Now we have other situation right here which is if you have any character on stealth and if you have any character that is underworld and those characters have counter they are going to have increased crit chance so this is going to be awesome because it's going to increase your damage output by huge amounts this uh, does not require t force which is great but you can see that uh, one of the key 
solutions for this team, for this strategy is definitely Nobu. So do, Nobu is definitely a character that you cannot replace. Uh, you, talking about characters, you can replace maybe Green Goblin or maybe not. I, I don't even think you can remove any character from here because all the characters are important. So we have a Taskmaster that is going to apply Blind to Morgan Le Fay, Agatha and everyone else, making sure that they are not able to to do anything to you then we have green goblin that is going to apply defense down to everyone and this is why i think it's not going to be important you cannot change any character it has to be these five specific characters then we have mr negative he has his summons that turn rewind the enemies and he also applies trauma on this match which might be convenient for you in case you want to ability block wong and you don't want him to cl clear away that and uh, you also have Kingpin that is going to do summons, he's going to call allies to assist on non-attacking abilities. The normal assists do not work, but the non-attacking assists do work. And then we have Nobu for the counters, for the deflects, and for more minions and so on. So this team is pretty much ridiculous. Once again, it's all based on uh, zerging the, your field, your side of the field with characters, and then using all those counters from Nobu to counterattack uh, the enemies. The team is, is uh, quite fun but uh, I don't know if it's a sure investment. So let's take a look at some action and then we'll have our final conclusions about this team. Okay, so let's take a look at this match. So we are going to use our underworld team and we are going to face that Darkhold over there. So we can see it's not the biggest Darkhold ever, but it's going to give us an idea. And you can see that Morgan Le Fay, she's 7 yellow, she's 5 red stars. And for most people that are not 100% tryhards, that's going to be the most common scenario. She also has gear tier 16, so that's pretty much meta. And then the other characters, gear tier 15, except Scarlet Witch, which doesn't really matter. And they, they have across the board 4 yellow stars, 4 red stars which is decent it's not amazing but let's take a look at the size of my team which we are going to use against this match so this is the team that i'm going to use we don't have any characters here beyond level 75 so 75 75 71 65 and nobu is also 65 so this is going to be a ridiculous scenario of course but this is to show you the power of this team the power of the underworld team and uh, if you want to see better gameplay than the one I'm going to be able to provide, you can check out the video from Pathfinder Gaming where it tested the Underworld team against several enemies in Alliance Wars. I'm not going to do that because, once again, I'm not exactly sure of the value of this team outside of Alliance Wars. So, as I said, we're going to talk about that after we take a look at this gameplay. But once again, if you want to see Underworld at a high level of gameplay, make sure to check out the latest video of Pathfinder Gaming. Okay, so as you can see, this is going to be a 200k punch up, which is ridiculous. And we have characters here with gear tier 12, 12 level 65. So this is beyond ridiculous. Now, you can see that the ISO weight is a little bit questionable. And the reason why we have this ISO weight is because it doesn't really matter. So you want Taskmaster on this specific situation as a striker because he's going to do damage with his bleeds and also with his counter attacks. Skirmisher, Iso White here, is not going to do anything because he's facing Morgan Le Fay. Morgan Le Fay stops him from doing the normal assists. He only can assist on non-attacking abilities. We don't know if this is a bug or what it is, but that's pretty much it. Now, then we have Green Goblin with Striker Iso White. And uh, that's fine, we want uh, Green Goblin to do as much damage as possible. Raider is also a possibility, but I prefer the single target nuke uh, instead of relying on luck. But you could also use uh, Raider because he gets the, the counter attack and he gets additional crit chance from Nobu. So Striker or Raider are going to be good options. I would even say, I'm gonna say it, Raider is the best one because of the counters with Nobu. If you don't have Nobu, then Raider is not gonna be the best option. So keep that in mind. You need the counters from Nobu for a Green Goblin to have a maximum raid, a Raider utility. Then we have a Mr. Negative as a skirmisher, and this is because we want to apply the ability block and the disrupt and the ability 
ability block and trauma on the enemies and we want that ability block to be spread to enemies then we have kingpin as a fortifier and this is going to allow him to give speed up and offense up to all the minions on the field even the ones that mr negative and nobu summon so this is going to be very important and then nobu as a striker because it's the only thing that he does well because of the counters that he is giving to himself and also whenever he counters he's also going to apply bleeds to the enemy so it's convenient for you to have a striker isolate to do more damage with the bleeds and to apply those bleeds to the enemies it's also convenient for some summoners to have the striker as a weight because the minions that they summon they will also increase in terms of damage if they have the striker as a weight this only happens for strikers and for skirmishers so strikers increases the base damage of the minions skirmisher increases the base focus of the minions okay so with all that explained let's get started let's take a look at this insane matchup and i'm not exactly sure if i'm going to be successful but i'm i'm going to give you an idea of what's possible once again i'm going to ask you if you want to check out the pathfinder gaming and see his latest video because it's very rep representative of what this team can do on very high levels of gear which i don't recommend okay so we have two options or we have three options you can ability block uh, strange supreme you can ability block agatha my favorite option is to ability block wong because i really don't want him to get taunt and if you don't apply the trauma there is a chance that he will remove the 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 ability block and we don't want any of that so let's just uh, i don't know let's ability block uh, it doesn't matter really let's ability block wong you could also ability block strange supreme maybe ability block strange supreme is actually the best option so he's not able to oh it doesn't matter because his special is not unavailable okay so never mind so we are going to do the basic we apply all those blinds to everyone and now here is one of the secrets instead of using the special uh, instead of using the ultimate you want to use the special this is going to call more minions for the field two additional minions and now all the minions have speed up offense up and death proof so now with the nobu we are going to give counters and deflects for everyone this is also going to give death proofs in alliance wars and as i mentioned if the, they have the counter they are going to to have 50 percent additional crit and this is why you might have a green goblin as a raider because he's going to get 40 percent chance of crit from the from the eyes weight is going to get 50 percent chance of crit from nobu and then he's going to get 10 percent chance of crit from the base stats that means 100 percent and that will guarantee to you that you'll always do additional crit damage okay so now we are going to slap that morgan of fey now it's all about slapping morgan of fey as much as possible and now take a look at that all those counters are going to destroy morgan of fey and once again this is with my very very small characters if my characters would be any bigger than gear tier 12 she would be dead now she would be dead now she has no dead proofs she has just a little bit of barrier and a little bit of health which agatha Harkness now healed up so any characters bigger than mine will completely destroy the dark old this is a gear tier 7 uh, gear tier 16 look at that morgan of Fey. gear tier 16 level 86 seven yellow stars five red stars this is a horseman supposedly this is going to be the the meta of the metas and uh, it uh, it makes us wonder is is that true is this team going to hold up or do we, do we have to start using this team on offense so it loses it doesn't lose its value so yeah with with this trash team 200k punch up we were able to destroy that morgan of fire once again if you want to see this 100 in action make sure you check out the video from pathfinder gaming and uh, now with green goblin if you had him as a raider he would have 100 crit chance you'd use the special ability morgan of fire would be focused on and the guy and she would get destroyed so this team is quite amazing and at this point you just want to use your minions to slap even more on the enemies you can uh, definitely stun that wong with uh, with taskmaster in a second uh, what you don't want is him to taunt if you can avoid him taunting that's going to be great but uh, yeah this team is like i said it's very very interesting but uh, the question is do they have any value outside of alliance wars can we use this team anywhere else other than alliance wars because as you guys know i'm not a big fan of uh, 
gearing up characters just for alliance wars so i need to get some value out of these characters elsewhere so let's see if you can actually find any value of these characters elsewhere so we are going to have some problems and all this information will be on my infographic whenever i will upload uh, maybe tomorrow i'll update the infographic so let's talk about taskmaster now taskmaster in terms of cosmic crucible in terms of avengers tower on avengers tower when you are focusing specifically when you can choose specifically which enemies you are facing is going to be great because he's going to apply blind to the primary target which can be omega red or any other character like that that is convenient for you to apply blind the problem is that outside of alliance wars he applies blind to the primary target and then he applies blind to two additional targets and it's going to be random so you don't know for sure if you are going to be fully protected or not the cooldown of this ability is quite big and uh, now there are so many characters that stop the assists so you have to be you have to be sure that uh, you are not facing any of these characters so that's going to be morgan lafay dormammu echo and a few other characters his stun is a, is great but it's a turn two ability so once again it's a little bit a little bit problematic and he's overall an expensive character to have once again every now and then it becomes very very useful but uh, it's not like a must have in anyone's roster the in terms of green goblin this car this character is 100 garbage outside of alliance wars it doesn't do pretty much anything he applies negative effects or applies defense down to one character and that's it and uh, the other abilities i mean if you have him together with nobu i guess but uh, maybe i'm not even sure because let's take a look at nobu so once again taking a look at his passive so this is only only on alliance wars so even if you have no good together with the other characters it's not gonna matter because it's alliance wars only now these counter counters and the flags they are still very useful in other game modes depending on which characters for example for blitz for blitz this is a great ability if you have him together with uh, with ultron but uh, Honestly, who gives a shit about Ultron and who gives a shit about Blitz? I don't think anyone will give a shit about that. And uh, yeah, so are you going to gear up this character just for Alliance Wars and for Blitz? I don't think so. I definitely don't recommend that. Now, Kingpin is a different scenario. Kingpin is a character that I actually find interesting. And you can get some use out of him on the first node of the skill in the Doom Tree Raids. And you can also get some use out of, out of him on the boss node uh, on the, the Doom skill raids, the Doom Tree skill raids. So that's overall interesting. He has way more synergies with any other characters. And because he summons a minion on spawn with taunt and with death proof, he actually can be extremely convenient on the Cosmic Crucible. So it's like having a mini Drax or a mini Red Guardian to block the way for your enemies. So for example, if you are going to use a Rogue against this team, Rogue would have to focus on the minion rather than focusing on any other character. So Kingpin is definitely a character that has some value. And now talking about Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative, in my opinion, is actually the most problematic character. And uh, the reason why it's because of his speed he spreads negative effects and that's great but uh, which characters apply negative effects faster than 122 speed there are not actually that many characters and because he's a mystic he also gets shafted against the dark old in other game modes he also gets shafted against dormammu in other game modes so this is overall a big problem and once again for me the biggest problem is the speed is way faster than cloak is way faster than dagger is way faster than hella is way faster than zombie iron man is way faster than most of the characters that apply a lot of negative effects so where exactly are we supposed to use this character are we supposed to use mr negative with a dark hold instead of scarlet witch I mean, that might be a possibility, but right now, this character looks a little bit problematic. I have tried a few teams in Alliance Wars trying to figure out exactly if I find a way to make this character useful outside of his own team, but it has been a, a little bit tough. And once again, the, the overall kit of the character is a little bit problematic. And I have a lot of problems with the ultimate, an ability that flips all positive effects 
on the enemies, who are we supposed to use this against? Because if we face uh, like uh, Young Avengers, or um, I guess maybe you can use this against uh, Wakanda if we can survive, but can we even survive against Wakanda for two turns in Cosmic Crucible in order to take advantage of this ability? I'm not exactly sure, and uh, that's why I have some problems with this character overall. Uh, I'm uh, very uncertain of uh, where we are supposed to use him and where we are supposed to use these characters individually outside of alliance wars you guys let me know in the comments below what you think about uh, the best use for these characters and uh, that's gonna be the video guys i hope you guys enjoy it once again make sure to check out uh, pathfinder gaming for, with his latest video on the underworld team it, he is able to show you at a high gear level which once again i don't recommend but uh, it's your account to do you do whatever you want and you do what makes you to have fun and this is definitely a fun team in alliance wars three times per week and that's it but you guys let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this information and if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you smash that like button and you found the video helpful make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe for more Marvel Force content and i will catch you guys later